today I'm gonna be talking about the, the research project I'm, I'm working on and I've been working uh, for the past two years on, on this project and I was having the, the tremendous support from Nuria Fagella and Xavier Jarque. Nuria is the lead uh, of the Holomorphic Dynamics Group in the University of Barcelona and that's, uh, the results I'm going to show you are part of the, the master thesis I presented a year ago. But uh, I have, uh, so I find this map as a metaphor for this quote from uh, Bill Thurston. Mathematics is a process of uh, staring hard enough at the fog of confusion to eventually break through to improve quality. And I took uh, this quote from his uh, descriptions in, uh, in his math overflow profile. He was a big user of that platform. He was posting questions. And I noticed that when he was asking these this sort of questions, I was doing an independent project six years ago at the University of Heidelberg. And actually, the, the la his last paper, there is this nice figure there. And it was related to the kind of work I was doing at Heidelberg University, playing with binary trees and other binary trees. And I built up this uh, interactive website under the supervision of uh, Susan Kromker, who is the, the lead group uh, there for the, ge the numerical geometry group at Heidelberg University. But the thing is that they had these manipulates, and there was one type of fractals that, uh, that uh, you, you get a similar map uh, to the sort of things. one. So, um, but then, like two years ago, I realized that because of Bill Thurston, now there was an, in, an interest in these kind of sort of sets. And uh, there is this uh, paper with uh, some improved notes by John Miller that, uh, that uh, improves the, 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 the work of Thurston. But then there is also the relation between these similar sets and the, the, the thing that Thurston was working on has been improved. Uh, and, and there is this nice paper by Sarah Koch. Daniel Gaia and Alden Walker, to 68 pages in ergodic theory, but they proved that there are infinitely many holes close to the boundary uh, for the, the disconnected uh, locus. So inside this black region, you get disconnected uh, cantor-like sets in the plane. So this so. is a moduli space of some dynamical systems. Each point gives you a different. Uh, yeah, system. exactly. It's, it's point it gives you like a, like a set like this uh, in there, but this one is connected, but the other ones are cantor-like. So uh, I decided to, 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 to understand and, and get uh, and, and study mathematics. I just joined my, this group in Barcelona. And the motivation uh, uh, to, to pay attention to my talk is that now I've, I've been able to understand better the internal structure. And I'm going to uh, use this notion of complex tree. So that's part of the motivation to, to use it. Uh, here you can see that Bill Thurston was well uh, aware of the relation with the self similar sets and the map he was introducing. And as an example, I'm, I'm, I'm the notion of complex tree, what is uh, allowing me is to, is to understand it uh, uh, in a way that you can impose this t to t connectivity relations. Um, for, for example, for, for these two pair of relations, you can get one family for the upper uh, relation and then another family for the lower one. And I'm just going to show you very quickly to have an intuitive idea of what this about. So um, that's like the, for the first. Uh, uh, relation there. So you have now a space of different trees that are connected like this way. But then you can have overlaps as well. But, but the, the, at least they have this connectivity by the imposition of your family. So if, if uh, the parameter Z is this branch, the other branch is going to go around this expression, this algebraic expression. That's the idea that you have one family for the upper relation and another one family for the, for the lower relation. And the intersection of these two families, it gives you like two elements. One of the elements is the one we, uh, we were seeing. Uh, that's the, this one. But the other relation is when you crunch these two p points at the same point, and then you get uh, a self similar set. And in this case, it has a fractal dimension two, and it's the, the one I printed here at ISM. And it's also translating the plane. So you find these nice algebraic numbers that, that you get these kind of elements that are interesting to study. That's just as a, they also have this, this nice artwork that I've submitted for. Uh, because of ISM was requesting some artwork. And that map is uh, showing you also this uh, space where, where the, the black region there, you take one point there, and then the branch is going to be minus this, this uh, point. So it's like uh, completely opposite. And if you are in this gray region there, the tip set is a cantor like, it's disconnected. The leaves don't, don't touch each other. But as soon as you get to the boundary or in the interior, that's a unit disk. Then you get connected, connected sets. And the, 
So the, the, the cloning and the, the, the size of these uh, points in there, it's relevant. It's not just an aesthetic thing. And I'm going to show you why. For example, let, let's zoom in in this, this area. For example, taking this point there, you get uh, this, this kind of uh, cell similar set. And this one is like the, the one that uh, I have it here printed. So uh, the, the interesting part is that you have like uh, two copies, so this is completely cell similar, and you, you just like translate the, the copies of the set. But in this case, the, the overlap between the two pieces, the first level two pieces, is exactly the same uh, set itself. So the, that's why actually this, the, I picked this one because it is nice that, that it has the Rosy fractal as a uh, limiting set. It's a Rosy classical fractal. And so that's the idea that these kind of points give you these uh, uh, piece to piece uh, overlaps and I kind of uh, interesting to understand. And the, the size of the, of the point, it's also important because when you put the, the node of that, uh, the initial nodes in there, to break down this, this uh, piece that are in the middle that is, is there. So if you want to perturbate the tree, uh, in order to separate the both pieces, you have to move away from this epsilon neighborhood in the area. Why is yeah. some of it blue and some of it yellow? Uh, this is, I, I was coloring them in different colors to show that uh, they are actually, there is these symmetries with the conjugate and also minus C and also uh, around the uh, unit cycle. But it's a, pu a, a pure aesthetic uh, uh, torch I put it there. And yeah, actually I can have this manipulate. I did like six years ago, but uh, now I with, I'm using this map that's new. So you see that, yeah, for, for this point in there, we get this overlap. So actually when, when it matches, then, and, and you can actually see the branch path as uh, polynomials. So when they, they collide, uh, then you have an uh, inequality satisfied. And, uh, but the, the thing is that you have many specimens in there. Now with this, this notion of uh, formal strings uh, and the nodes that it, it generates, I, I have been able to understand this uh, internal structure, but I'm not gonna be talking about that today, about this. I just wanna show you like the notion of complex trees. It's, it's a very simple one. You take, for example, the, the, the idea was like the geometric series has these uh, visual representations in the complex plane. Each node is the, is a, is the summon of the, of the sex of your series. And, and now if you play and, and took all the combinatorial possibilities with, between two complex numbers, not only Z, then you get uh, this binary tree in the plane. And uh, the idea is that you want all the branches, all the uh, all the complex numbers that take to be uh, uh, smaller than the, the, other going, uh, the, the absolute value has to be smaller than one to be contractive. If not, the, the limited set is not going to contract. So you start with a complex value alphabet of two letters in this case, and from that you construct words, and all the words are going uh, are going to be projected with this map phi. That's uh, called like a geometric map. But for example, uh, this initial node is is uh, one plus C1 in black, and then 1-1 one, one is just like uh, the geometric series of style. But now if you take 1-1-2, one, one, then you're just taking the right branch instead of keeping with uh, the red branch. So when, when the word is finite, I call these nodes of the tree. And the uh, very important one is that the empty string that's mapped at the root of the tree. That happens for all NRE trees. And then what happens if you have a, an infinite uh, Words. So the points are just all polynomials and... Yeah, you have these algebraic expressions between the, the your alphabet, yeah. Uh, no, actually, no, you, you, have, uh, you have these numbers. So it's, it's really like a geometric uh, series of style for all the nodes. But then... <laughs> yeah, for example, if you play with, uh, with uh, C and minus C, then you get these minus and plus signs because you were multiplying different signs and yeah and then for infinite words you get what I call tip points uh, the typical one is this uh, one that's just one 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 that's uh, the geometric series expression like the other one there but then for example one two one two one two you get also you get a close for for it and if your word is uh, periodic or eventually periodic you get uh, closed forms uh, to play with so um, if you take only all the tip points, and you get the self similar set, uh, which satisfies the, the self similarity equation. Where I'm just going to use the, the key pointer. 
where the MAPF2, for example, is mapping the whole tip set, contracting it by the, the your number, C2, and uh, rotating by the argument. And then I'm adding this translation by one. So, so that, that's what it's doing, the F2 and F1 is doing the same, but for the C1 complex number. So we end up with the same set, and that's just like the invariant set of your two EFS. And I call the, this uh, F1 in black and F2 in, 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 in red, the first level pieces. If it's a binary tree, you have two. And by just by looking at if they are intersecting or not, you can uh, and see if they are connected or not. And in this case, it's, it's a Cantor set in the plane. But uh, the key idea when I started doing this project two years ago was to impose uh, some connectivity conditions. So let, let's take, for example, these expressions there, this, uh, these uh, four T points with these closed forms for the T points, where, where you are following always, at the end, it's always uh, red, 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 red. So it's this piece, uh, it's always red. Always red, so you get these nice forms. And I try to to impose that these two are, have to be connected, and all, these other two have to be connected as well. So we have a two uh, a system of uh, of two equations with three unknown complex variables that gets reduced to the, to this uh, parameterization. So C one in black is your com is your variable there, the node, and then C two in, in red is going to be always one half constant, and then the 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 branch in, in blue is just a Mobius transformation by one fourth of uh, C1. So the thing is that you, you get this uh, condition that you get the connectivity that you were imposing to the family. And uh, the first level pieces, because it's a ternary tree, you get uh, three pieces. And uh, F1 with F2 are intersecting in this point D, and F2 with uh, F3 are intersecting in this point E. And uh, so you get these uh, two tip-to-tip -tip equivalent relations, and I call these like the topological set of the Celsius set because uh, that's the encoding all the uh, topological structure of the limiting set. But you still have uh, one concrete parameter Z? Yeah, so I, that's actually what I call a structurally stable tree, because I, now I can perturbate this, this node in there, but the, still like, the topological set stays the same. So you change the geometry, but the, the topological set uh, doesn't change. And that's one nice thing about the, having this condition. So what I was trying to study about these families is, is when this is lost when this kind of a structural stability is lost. So the, the parameter space we are dealing here for this family, uh, it's contained in the unit disk, but because we want all the branches to be contractive, C3 is contractive, uh, it's more than one, if uh, Z is uh, bigger than one force. So we are uh, constrained in this uh, annulus for this family. Uh, so um, I'm gonna show you, that's the point we started with for, for this example, with this Z value for the, and then I'm just gonna move down a bit uh, so you see that the geometry is changing, but the topology stays the, the same. Now I'm just gonna move left until we reach uh, this classical fractal that's a uh, Sierpinski triangle. And here, uh, as you see, there is an extra connectivity within F1 and F3. And now I have to put another uh, tip to tip equivalent relation in there. So we have three, and I color the point in black because the topological set uh, have changed, and we have an extra one. And I build up a, I can see the, I make a, a, an algorithm to just to, to plot uh, points in black like this one in this space, and I ended up with this map. And, uh, and then I was able to prove that actually the boundary of this map is piecewise smooth, and there is this nice alternate curves that determine the, the boundary, actually these are like exact uh, style lines, these two. Can you spend like 30 seconds saying what the algorithm was? I didn't want to go into it, but I can explain it uh, after my seminar. But it's just like you get uh, um, polynomials because you are uh, imposing extra connectivity relations. So I can actually, uh, so instead of having, whoops. Instead of, uh, so you are like um, playing with these relations. These relations are giving you an equality, and you are using the letters of your parameterization of the alphabet. So you end up with a polynomial, and you, if you find the root, you're gonna find the, the black points in there, because are, these are the trees that are gonna have this condition in there. So that's the way I was crunching the, the so this thing. this is a two-parameter family? Before, before you touch, and then there's a boundary to it? As, as soon as you impose this condition, you get uh, one parameter family. 
Yeah. Uh, for uh, yeah, the, the and, and I'm going to show why it's it's happening. Uh, you get this. Uh, so the, these are the two side lines, and then this curve there are these two algebraic uh, uh, curves. But I'm going to just go and animate around, starting with the Sierpinski triangle that lives here. I'm going to go down, uh, moving the first branch, but I'm removing the branches to see only the tip set. So that's what happens. You are sliding around this edge. You get this critical point, and then you have to switch to another algebraic uh, curve. You get this uh, connectivity. You have to switch another one. When you get the accidents, that's the corners? Yeah, those are the corners. And here it's just going up. And you get this, uh, these tangential intersections between the pieces. So, so that's the idea, that you, you are starting at this point. And actually, because of the symmetry of this family, you get that the, the blue branch is mapped there. But as soon as this one goes this way, the other one goes that, uh, the other way. So yeah, there is this Mobius transformation that is an extra symmetry. And the, and the one in red is always one half for the family. So you get these, these critical points in the corners when you get these nice uh, algebraic numbers also that pop out. Here, just sliding. And I did this animation like two years ago. Now I've been able to prove this using the other animation I was showing. But uh, so the thing is that you get these conditions in there. So you, yeah, you have these uh, algebraic numbers for these ones. This one is special because actually all the three pieces are intersecting in, in the root of the tree at one. And also, if there is the root, there is a theorem I proved that uh, at zero is going to be contained in the tip set, and zero actually lies here. So now I'm, I'm showing an, another family to show you that uh, this is um, rather an exception when you have this nice boundary. And that's for just the, instead of having one half and putting the branch at minus one half, and I get this, this structure. And in this case, the, the tip to tip equivalent relations are these two. And from these two, actually, you get a, a system that gets reduced almost like the, the same one, but uh, uh, having the minus two in there. So for this family, you get this map uh, where inside this interior part, there is only two connectivity uh, relations. But outside, you get uh, this extra. And <coughs> right in the boundary, you get these nice algebraic numbers uh, that are in the landmark points in your boundary. But now the, the, the boundary is, is, is rough. There is one, one nice smooth curve here. It's interesting to, to prove that it happens, but then uh, it's uh, quite wild. And usually that happens because fractals are rough in general. So when you try to collide. Oh, yeah, 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 that's like the reflection thing. So you have to prove only one side because of this uh, obvious transformation, one, one fourth transformation. But yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, so the idea is that you are colliding, uh, just touching the pieces. And because there is uh, the external boundary now, it's, it's uh, rough. There is these ins and outs that you're going to have to move and play around. And that doesn't happen for the other family I show you, where, where, where the, the external boundary is made up of these style lines. And then you get these nice algebraic curves. Uh, so what happens, for example, if I um, free up this, this one here, uh, I'm opening it and just I'm imposing the one for the Sapinski triangle that goes down. So I have these two tips. And here you get another family. Uh, the Sapinski triangle is also an element of this family. But now we have also the rosy uh, fractal. That I don't know which tips to choose. Like, if you just pick two weird words at random, you probably won't get any. Yeah, for, for these examples, I, I was picking the ones I knew that was uh, were behaving well. Um, for example, the Sapinski triangle gives you these three t to tip equivalent relations. And I, I'm showing only these. These elements and also the reverse of the Sapinski triangle, but uh, usually it can be yeah. Sometimes there is no wide region where you have this kind of a structural stability, so you get these kind of structures in there. And the Sapinski is one of the elements in there. Yeah, in there. So uh, because I wanted to make a short presentation, uh, I'm just like uh, at the end. So. That's this quote from Get that if you wish to advance into the infinite, explore the finite in all directions. And I'm just going to stop here and ask, uh, you can ask me questions. So you were sort of choosing tips that look extreme and identifying them. If you yeah. random tips and identify yeah. them, yeah. yeah, usually you are not lucky, and, and the whole space, there is a bunch of overlaps in there. 
And actually, in my master thesis, uh, I had a conjecture about if you have a, a pair of like nodes with finite words of the same length, uh, these words encoded, and you put them together, I I was seeing uh, numerically that always they, there is an overlap, so you don't have a structurally stable tree. And uh, but I was unable to prove it in a good way. I've been able to prove other theorems about these trees, but this one is uh, still open. And, I think there's yeah. probably like finitely many that work, and they have to be pretty short. Well, I think it's it's, it's an infinite countable many. Okay. Yeah, because. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the thing that I know that is because I was six years ago. I was playing with uh, mirror symmetric ones. Uh, yeah. So, for example, uh, so the, the the last family I show you, if you go only like a, a, a the, you are staying in this like a mirror, uh, or like that's the the one half cycle, the radius. So if you move around these two edges there, you find these elements. Uh, that's the this animation in there. So uh, you see that you get these two extremes. Yeah, actually, this is like the stack of uh, uh, it was uh, printing in sandstone a long time ago, and and this is uh, the, when you are moving in this part at one half, you have this mirror symmetry uh, with the with the, with the other branch that's uh, in blue, and and for mirror. Symmetric NRE trees. I proved uh, that these uh, just touching conditions happen, and there is these uh, uh, curves for. So the, the, there is infinitely many there, and in all of these ones, you can find like a family that's like the whole font for the the first uh, piece. And here you can move freely, and you can have a stable tree with the same topology. And uh, the as, as soon as you cross this part, you get this uh, so you overlap. N, N trees. Yeah, NRE trees, yeah. Does it vary? Yeah, this is like the NRE trees, and this is like binary trees, and, 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 and so on. Uh, yes. Many. Uh, for this, this, this case, yes, but, but, but I had to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had like two families. This is just, I have this for, for um, the up, lower down, but then I have this other one. Uh, yeah. So, this is like uh, when you use the polar plot for this, this uh, the, you have these ones. But uh, now I'm going to show you like what happens when you have. Uh, uh, maybe I didn't. But, I mean, the example you showed at the end of your, your actual talk, yeah. where there was a region with sort of fractal boundary, doesn't every sort of special point, on, there are countably many points on that fractal boundary where something extra is happening. That's countably many different. Yeah, and you get many algebraic numbers in these uh, these like uh, landmark points. Uh, so you're kind of yeah. a special tip here. Yeah. Which is okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and these are like you have all these uh, these pieces in there that are piecewise smooth, but uh, in these ones uh, you can actually get uh, a neighborhood and these regions that are stable, and that's like for. Um, an RE tree with, with an even number of branches, but then uh, there's like the unit these equations. But for uh, odd number of branches, you get a similar uh, kind of family of different equations in there. But uh, still, I have uh, a lot of work to do, like to to use. Uh, I was using this concept of math cartography because I uh, I see that the elements in the boundaries are interesting because it's one you can switch from one family to another, and and you can actually, uh, yeah, map them together and, and see what's in there. And yeah, to construct these, uh, this kind of, this is just uh, an approximation. But uh, the way I was getting points in the boundary for the for the ones um, I was describing you at the at the last part is uh, to get uh, the geodesics of these uh, self similar sets. So I was uh, getting these uh, geodesics and. And then seeing how they are going to intersect uh, the pieces, so it's like uh, intersecting two. You're trying to intersect two fractal curves, and then you get these uh, these boundaries uh, that are getting closer and closer to the actual boundary. Actually, you can say that uh, there are infinitely many points that are part of the boundary. I just see black dots on the 
in this interior part. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, you get uh, you have to keep adding more uh, different branches in there, and actually, um, so the, the, these uh, geodesics are in some in some way good, but then there is still extra ones. So it's um, yeah, let me. Yeah, that's um, we, we can discuss this later if you wanna. It's uh, you can get like a lower point like, where there is an arbitrary curve that goes from here to here. The but then yeah, the red spikes. Yeah, I was connecting them, but actually you have to add uh, extra parts in there. But the, yeah, yeah, and also for example the blue parts, you, you have also interior points in there. Yeah, it, but 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 there is the different things to to consider in there because the geometry can can morph and you have to get another fractal curve for, for the for the boundary of the sets uh, it's uh well there is, there is different geodesics uh like the, uh, uh yeah you can like uh, uh think about subsets um yeah let me just open the this uh, preprint i had so the the idea is that for for these ones that are found in in in, in these critical points of the boundary, we said, if you, for example, if you remove the, the branch in blue, you still get a connected uh, binary complex tree, and these ones are these uh, three ones in there. So actually, you lose this branch in blue, but there's still uh, the connectivity is connected, and actually there is a equivalent relation that that meet, and from this equivalent relation you can get a uh, parametric, uh, parametric family and the region where it's defined is, is in this one for this case this other one for this other one so the, you can like see that they are connected and, and then you can mate them in the just by adding branches for example or, or there's a bunch of different things to play with